אוקיי. אוקיי, אני חושב שאנחנו יכולים להתחיל ולהתחיל ולהתחיל ולהתחיל. והשני טוק של הפעם הזאת הוא על ידי טיבו קונג'י מנורסון בריאה אוניברסיטי, וטיבו יתחיל לדבר על הדברים האוניברסיטי של הדברים האוניברסיטי. Thanks. Uh, I also would like to thank the uh, Simon Foundation to support my uh, stay at the uh, Newton, uh, Newton Institute for the, for the program on, on dispersive hydrodynamics. So, yeah, the title uh, here, I have to nuance it a bit. Uh, you will see that it's a universal description of dispersive shock wave, but in uh, close to the uh, training edge of the dispersive shock wave. So it's a, it's a work I did with uh, Gennady L. Uh, Mark Hoffer and Michael Shearer that are, uh, I think the, they are all here in, in this room. And uh, uh, we published it in a uh, study uh, in applied mathematics. So, uh, yeah, I also wanted to thank all the speakers that talked before me. There was a lot, a lot of uh, nice talk about dispersive shock waves, so then the, the work is easier for me. So, Uh, here I'm showing you a, a, an example of, of a dispersive shock wave. So uh, this is an initial value problem. We start with a step. For numerical reason, it's not an exact step. Here you see there is some uh, smoothing. It's an hyperbolic, uh, hyperbolic tangent profile. And to change a little bit, we have seen a lot of, of KDV and NLS during the workshop. Here I took the uh, Benjamin Bonner and Maoni uh, equation. So it's a video. And uh, you see that this step evolved into this uh, celebrated dispersive shock wave. So just a, a, small, a small summary of, uh, uh, on, on the anatomy of the dispersive shock wave. So you can see it as a modulated periodic wave that connects two very different, two very distinct limits. So on the left, you have the so-called uh, solitary wave limits, where your wave has a finite amplitude But the wave number of the periodic wave is going to zero. Or if you want, the wavelength of the periodic wave is going to infinity. On the other side, uh, you have the small amplitude uh, wave limit, or uh, harmonic limit, where now you have a finite wave number, so finite wavelengths. But the amplitude of the wave is going to zero. And uh, this structure, so this modulated periodic wave, It's not a traveling wave solution. It's an expanding, an expanding structure. So actually, if you compute the velocity of this limit and this limit, they are going at two different speeds. And that's what you saw in the video, that this is an expanding structure. So uh, we already had uh, many talks on, uh, with the modulation theory by, by Gennady and then this morning uh, by Stefano Trillo. So here is just a a brief summary, but the, the usual uh, theory that you use is the uh, Wisdom modulation theory. And uh, here are the few, few steps that you need to do to, to obtain, to obtain the, the dispersive shock wave solution. So first, uh, you suppose that you have a periodic traveling wave that is parameterized by a set of parameters. Uh, here, uh, I suppose that I will have three independent parameters. Let's say the amplitude, the wave number, and here what I call the mean value, which is uh, the average of your periodic wave over one period of oscillation. And to obtain uh, the modulation of this parameter, you suppose that this uh, set of parameters is slowly varying. So slowly varying compared to what? Uh, you suppose that the parameters are constant over one period of oscillation, but if you zoom out, you have this kind of, of microscopic dynamics of the parameter. So to obtain this dynamic, this slow dynamics, uh, there are many different ways to do it. Uh, I would say the, the historic way or the classical way is to average conservation law. So since you have uh, three parameters, you will need to average three conservation law. Actually, uh, it's simpler than that. You just need to average two conservation law of your dynamics. And then you add the so-called conservation of waves that is always valid, where uh, K here is a wave number, and omega is the dispersion relation, the nonlinear dispersion relation for your periodic wave. 
And this way you obtain uh, three, uh, three modulation equations. So you obtain this system. M here is a three by three uh, matrix. It's a, quasi, uh, it's a quasi linear system. And it has been first obtained by, by Wisdom in, uh, his, in uh, his famous paper of 65. Okay, so uh, there are many things to say about this system, but uh, I won't have time to, to talk too much about this, this system. So what, uh, what do you do when you obtain this system? So today I will talk about dispersive shock wave generated by an initial step, so a so-called Riemann problem. So here, suppose that I start with uh, U minus on the left, U plus on the right, and you have seen in the video that it generates this dispersive shock wave. So once you obtain uh, the Wisdom modulation system, you can put it in a nice form. So you can obtain a Riemann invariant. Basically, you're diagonalizing this uh, system, this quasi-linear uh, system. And you can write the modulation of the dispersive shock wave as uh, this three equation. So the conservation of two Riemann invariant here, lambda one and lambda three. And you suppose that one of the characteristic velocity of the modulation system is equal to the self parameter x over t. So uh, here I, I won't enter too much into the detail, but you see that uh, so these Riemann invariants are constant, and you determine this constant with u plus and u minus the uh, parameter of your initial uh, of your initial condition. Um, yeah, so that's something. Uh, this structure of the solution here, the fact that it's uh, a self similar a refaction wave, if you want, of your uh, modulation system. I will use this property later when we will be, uh, uh, when I, I will present this universal description of dispersive shock wave. So this solution has been first for, found for, for Kortovec de Vries, for KDV by Gurevich and Pitayevsky in 73. And that's uh, the picture of the paper, uh, of, of the 73 paper that I uh, included here. So you have the modulation here of the three parameters. So tau is of self-similar parameter, x over t. And you have the amplitude that go from uh, zero to some finite value here. You have the decreasing of the mean value and also the decreasing of the wave number that go from small amplitude wave to solitary wave limit. So uh, the difficult part usually is in, in this problem, so there are two, two difficulties. The first one is uh, to obtain, of course, the Wisdom modulation equation. You need to derive the periodic wave, and then you need to do the average. But then the story does not end here. Uh, the real difficulty is to obtain this Riemann invariant, so lambda 1, lambda 3, and lambda 2 that I did not write here. Um, so you can, write this, you can write this solution if you have this Riemann invariant. So you can, you can do this systematically for integrable system. So here, uh, as a reference, I, I put the, the book of Anatoly Kamchatnov on modulation for nonlinear wave. And as long as your dynamics is integrable, you can obtain this Riemann invariant. So what can you do when you have non-integrable dynamics? So now the story gets more complicated. So Gennady, in, in 2005, determined a, a method that uh, we now call the dispersive shock wave fitting method where for non-integrable dynamics, you can obtain the characteristic of your two limits, the harmonic wave limit and the solitary wave limit. So you obtain the parameter, uh, K minus, and here's the amplitude of the, the soliton A plus, as well, uh, 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 as, well as the, the, their speed uh, S minus and S plus. So the idea uh, in, in this work was, okay, we know what's happening to the, uh, at the limit here. Can we say more? Can we say something about the internal structure, the, the, in, the, the internal structure of the dispersive shock wave? And that's why I will try to, to show you in this, uh, in this 20, 20 minutes. Okay, so uh, to do this, uh, we will adopt a different framework to describe the modulation of our uh, nonlinear waves. So first of all, here I will uh, reduce, uh, I will choose the class of, of dispersive hydrodynamics I will, I will consider today. So here I will suppose scalar dispersive hydrodynamics. 
It can be done for a more complicated system. Of course, I will show you result at, at the end of the presentation. But here to simplify, let's suppose that we have scalar dispersive hydrodynamics with here dispersive operator D of U that yields a real linear dispersion relation. So suppose that you have a constant background. You had a small perturbation of wave number K naught. The frequency uh, of your uh, small perturbation of or small excitation will be uh, omega naught given by this relation, so the dispersion relation. And here, uh, we, will be, we will do a very strong assumption. We will suppose that the nonlinear waves that we are interested in are uh, weakly nonlinear waves. So we do this uh, small amplitude, slowly varying stoke wave, and that. So here we write our field UXT as a constant field, plus here a carrier wave of dominant wave number uh, K naught omega naught. And uh, you have a modulation of the envelope for this carrier wave, and uh, this, this envelope is uh, the complex field psi. So that's something that uh, Justin Cole has uh, shown uh, briefly yesterday. So that's the same, the same kind of, uh, of computation. And of course, uh, here uh, the picture is complete only if you also add a small perturbation here of your background. So here new is not uh, multiplying any carrier wave. It's just a real slowly varying field. So uh, the strong assumption here is to suppose that you have uh, almost monochromatic wave because of the carrier wave and your two fields here, psi and V, are very small. And then this is very standard computation. It's much more simple, much more simple to, uh, to do this computation than to obtain the Wisdom modulation equation. And you can show that uh, by using multiple scale uh, multiple scale expansion, you obtain uh, the NLS equation, the nonlinear Schrodinger equation uh, written here. So what do we have here? We have a different coefficient, so it's an equation for the complex envelope psi. We have beta that depend on k naught and u naught. This is the second derivative of the dispersion relation. Uh, gamma, so here gamma, it's, uh, you, you need to do the multiple scale expansion. It depends on your, on your system. You don't have a nice a nice simple expression like this. And you show that the correction to the background is actually proportional to psi square. Uh, yeah, something I forgot to mention here. Uh, I'm writing this equation not in x and t, but you see in uh, chi and t. So here we are working in the reference frames that move with the group velocity of the stock waves. So there is just a small change of variable here. Uh, so, okay, here, uh, that's something we have, uh, I mean, a lot of people have already mentioned. You have two regimes for NLS, the so-called defocusing regime and the focusing regime. So it depends on the sign of beta naught, gamma naught. And what do we know? We know that in the focusing regime, you have a so-called uh, modulationally unstable stock wave, so here uh, the plane wave solution of your NLS equation is unstable. If you have small perturbation, uh, the, the small perturbation uh, grow uh, exponentially in time, in, in short time. Okay, so let's compare these two, uh, these two descriptions. So I, I did a small comparison here. In green, the advantages, and in red, uh, the inconvenient of each description. So what is nice with them is that you derive modulation equation for arbitrary amplitude uh, periodic wave. So this works for any amplitude, small amplitude wave or solitary wave. And it also works for a broad range of wave numbers. The same quasi-linear system describes harmonic wave as well as solitary wave. The key that here is that the Wisdom modulation equation is system specific. So that's really the problem here that you need to derive it for each, uh, for each system. So uh, you need to, to derive it and the derivation is complicated. So what NLS uh, bring to the table here? So it's not as good as Wisdom because it's only valid here for, uh, in the weakly nonlinear regime. So for small amplitude, for almost monochromatic wave, so K here will be close to K naught, and also for short wavelength wave. So here NLS won't describe the solitary wave limit of the dispersive shock wave. 
But the very, uh, the very, I mean, the, the, the big advantage here of considering an LS is that its derivation is very, uh, it's simple and systematic. And you can do it without any difficulty for integrable, non-integrable systems. There is no uh, conceptual difference here for integrable and non-integrable systems. So why, why uh, I'm doing this comparison? I'm doing this comparison because these two descriptions here uh, are valid in the weakly nonlinear regime of the dispersive shock wave. So if you want to describe this part of the dispersive shock wave, both descriptions are valid because you are Small amplitude, your wave number is close to the wave number of the trailing edge, and uh, here k is equal to zero. You don't have a, a soliton, uh, solitary waves here. So that's why I will use now, I will use the fact that these two descriptions are valid here to derive now the modulation of the dispersive shock wave. Okay, so. Um, it's another uh, small summary, but uh, keep this in mind when I will show you uh, uh, some uh, mathema com mathematical computation in, in a few slides. So what are we doing now? So we have some dispersive hydrodynamics. We do our multiple scale. We obtain the NLS equation. So in the multiple scale, you have these two assumptions, slowly varying and small amplitude wave. And once you have the NLS equation, that's the next step. You do the Madlung transform, so that's something that we have seen a lot uh, today. So you rewrite your complex envelope as an amplitude and a phase. And here, uh, basically, the gradient of the phase is giving you, is giving you the correction to uh, the wave number. So you do this Madlung transform. And if you do the Madlung transform, uh, you should have this uh, quantum, uh, quantum pressure term that we have seen today. But here, we take the disperse, dispersionless limit uh, in that case, we are not interested in dispersive correction of the modulation uh, today. And what you end up with, you end up with a shallow water equation uh, type system. So uh, here I have been a little bit uh, mean because uh, I could have wrote A square as a density and K minus K cannot as a velocity field and it will be a little bit more clear, but I wanted to, to, to stay with this, uh, these two quantities. So here it's really shallow water shallow water equation with some coefficients, beta naught and gamma naught that are just the coefficient of the NLS equation. Uh, if you remember, we examined three modulation equation. Here we only have two for amplitude and wave number because uh, in this description, in this NLS description, you show directly that the mean field, the correction to the mean field is amplitude square. So that's why we don't have this, this, third, this third equation. And just to compare, so this is what happens when you do, uh, when you use the Wisdom modulation description. You do the averaging of conservation law that is somehow equivalent to slowly varying uh, assumption in the multiple scale analysis. And then if you take the small amplitude limit, so it has been done already in, in previous work, you can show that you have a shallow water equation. So somehow uh, this thing is reassuring because it shows that if you do two different paths here in your derivation, you still end up with this shallow water shallow water equation. So this is somehow, this is a universal in the small amplitude limits of the modulation. So why, uh, why do we prefer this thing than this thing? So it's just due to this. Uh, okay, I cannot convince you without uh, in entering the derivation, but it's much more, uh, okay, actually that's what I, I'm telling to my uh, calculus students. It's much easier to differentiate than uh, to do an integration. And that's exactly what you are doing here because what is multiple scale analysis is just differentiating uh, inside your, uh, differentiating with respect to slow variable. Integration here, so first obtaining the periodic wave and then integrating periodic wave in your conservation law is much, much more complicated. And actually this thing, uh, I think it's very hard to implement in symbolic package this thing I will show you that in Mathematica, it takes just a few seconds of Mathematica to do this entire step. Okay, so uh, what, uh, what, what are the next steps? So you have the NLS equation, you have this shallow water system, and now you want to obtain the modulation. So what do we know here? Uh, we want to derive the solution here, and from the work of, of Gennady of 2005, 
we can derive the wave number of the dispersive shock wave when the amplitude is equal to zero. So the next step is saying that, okay, now my nonlinear wave is just a wave of dominant wave number k minus, and there is a correction, a weakly nonlinear correction to this wave, and it's given by the, oops, it's given by the modulation of the shallow water system. So the next step, you take this shallow water system and you look for rarefaction wave solution because we know from the Wisdom modulation uh, theory, we know from gurevich pitayevsky that the solution should be rarefaction wave of the modulation system. So that's what we are doing here and we are using this boundary condition. So we write the rarefaction wave and we are using the fact that when the amplitude is equal to zero, k should be equal to k minus. And if you use the shallow water equation, that's what you obtain. You obtain linear growth of the amplitude, linear growth of the wave number, and this quadratic uh, correction for uh, the mean value. So here you see uh, the coefficients, a coefficient of NLS, so you always have the same shape, and they are evaluated here at K minus. So that's something that uh, has been termed before as the martini glass shape of the dispersive shock wave, so this linear growth, so you go from zero amplitude to this uh, linear growth. And it's actually an universal feature of dispersive shock wave. So universal, uh, here it has to be taken with a, a pinch of salt because it's universal only if beta and gamma are different from zero and only if you are in the modulationally stable case. So when beta gamma is negative or if you want, when you have defocusing and else. So that's the idea. So this is a comparison for KDV. So KDV is integrable, so it's a little bit overkill because we already know the exact solution, but we use KDV here as a model to compare to the exact solution. So you see that for the amplitude, it's quite good. But for the wave number and the mean value, so close to the, uh, close to the uh, trailing edge, it's quite good, but then when you reach the solitary wave limit here, it starts deviates a lot from the, from the exact solution. The nice thing is that if you take the gurevich pitayevsky solution, you do an expansion close to the linear wave and you will find exactly this coefficient. So here, sorry, I forgot to precise, but we have uh, numbers here because I chose uh, this special uh, initial step. Okay, but uh, this is KDV, we already know KDV. Let's do a non-integrable model. So let's do uh, the conduit equation here. So conduit equation, these are the parameters. In blue, it's the numerics, and in red, it's this uh, shallow, water, shallow water description. So for the amplitude, it's still quite good. You can see that for the wave number and the mean value here, you're really restricted to uh, the regime very close to the trailing edge. So can we, do, can we do better than that? Yes, we can do better than that. We just have to continue our multiple scale analysis. So usually we stop here to obtain the NLS equation, but you can continue. It's quite standard computation. So here it has been first done, in, for, for instance, in optical fiber. You, you have same derivation for geophysical fluid. It's quite a standard computation. And that's the next term in uh, your uh, NLS description for the envelope. So if you want a higher order NLS. So you have this correction for the envelope. You also need to consider this correction for uh, the mean value here. And you do the same. Madlung transform, you take the dispersion less limit and you obtain this system. So it's a two, uh, system of two equations, so you can always find Riemann invariant, but in that case, we could not find an analytical expression for the Riemann invariant. So what you can do, since you are interested by the next correction of the rarefaction wave, you can look for an uh, approximated solution in power series of uh, chi over t. And that's what uh, I'm showing you here. So you have this coefficient that now depend on the higher order nonlinear term. And uh, the plus minus here correspond to the sign, uh, the sign of beta. So, uh, okay, so here, I hope this will uh, work. If I can, uh, yeah. So I told you this thing, it's very nice for symbolic package, for symbolic computation, because differentiating software like Maple, Mathematica, they are doing it very well. So let's do it 
for KDV. So here I wrote the KDV equation, and I precise that I want to stop at the order, the order two. So I evaluate the notebook. It takes few seconds. So here I already give, gave uh, a wave number for the Mathematica file, and you obtain this correction. So here, uh, of course, I already wrote the solution in the notebook, so it's not really useful, but you can increase the order. So let's check at order uh, four. So it takes a little bit more time because uh, it's, you need to go higher, uh, in higher order of the multiple scale analysis. Okay, it takes uh, more time than unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, sir. okay, it's there. So here you have the four order. Uh, I took KDV because KDV, we can take Gurevich Pitayevsky, do the same expansion and compare. And okay, so here, okay, I, I'm telling you this is exactly Gurevich uh, Pitayevsky, and you see that uh, we have the same coefficient. So for instance, 151 over 7,776, you, you have it here. And that's a comparison. So what I'm showing you here, I'm looking at the correction of the wave number. In black, you have Gurevich Pitayevsky. In green, you have NLS. In blue, higher order NLS. And in red, higher order, higher order NLS. So you can continue like this. Of course, uh, here, I'm not showing you the next order because it converges very slowly. Uh, it's very hard to obtain the modulation of the solitary wave with a weakly nonlinear description. So in practice, uh, you don't really have hope to obtain this, this description here. But here, you see that uh, for a large part of the dispersive shock wave, you get a nice, a nice description uh, with this, uh, with this uh, higher order NLS. Yeah, it's possible. So here, I mean, uh, we, we did not go, I mean, we, we did not do a very higher, because then at some point, Mathematica take a very long time to compute the, the higher order. But it's a, I, I don't know if it's really converged. It's a good question. It won't converge to shock, absolutely. No, no, it's impossible. Yeah, yeah. So does it mean that the early stage becomes the problem for a very long time? Mm, I don't know, because your mean value is still going to, to zero and your wave number. So the, especially the mean value, I'm not sure you, even at early time. Uh, Maybe you just need to expand near the level in which you look at it? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, because here it works. I mean, this description works in the asymptotics in the end. So I, I'm not even sure that in small time it would, uh, it would work correctly. Uh. So, uh, okay, so just to, to finish on, on this. so. We did it for two, uh, so this is conduit equation. In dark is the shallow water, and in red, it's this higher order NLS. So here actually, uh, it's not the X uh, square correction, it's uh, we computed the Riemann invariant of the higher order NLS, the dispersionless higher order NLS, and you get a slightly better approximation than just the quadratic correction. So that's what you are seeing here. And the same for the sergrin nadi system. So now it's no longer scalar dispersive hydrodynamics. And uh, so you see that for the wave number and the mean value, it's quite good. So for the amplitude, and that's something uh, that still needs to, to be uh, understood, you have the same for the conduit equation. Uh, so you have the same uh, behavior, but you can see that you have a shift for the amplitude. And that's something that is still, uh, uh, we still don't clearly understand why you have this, this, this shift for, for the amplitude. Okay, so the, the conclusion here, uh, so I hope I convince you that we have this universal description, I mean, at least close to the training, uh, the training edge. And in particular, it's very nice for non-integrable equation because here you don't have any hope to use the wisdom modulation equation because you cannot, you don't have a systematic derivation of the Riemann invariant. And actually you are not even sure the Riemann invariant for the wisdom modulation system. I show you it can be easily implemented by uh, in symbolic uh, package. You could also use the NLS, an higher order NLS, to uh, study the stability, the modulational stability of the dispersive shock wave. So uh, I wanted to focus more here on the, on the perspective. 
So I focused here on the Martini glass dispersive shock wave. It would be nice to have an extension to a glass of wine dispersive shock wave. Right. Yeah, Bordeaux, yeah. <laughs> I should be more. Uh, yeah. So, uh, or for if you want the more technical term for, to describe contact dispersive shock waves. So this happens when your uh, modulation system is no longer strictly uh, hyperbolic. Another thing, uh, two other things that would be uh, actually very nice. So first, I did not show you, and that's why at the beginning I take a smooth step. But usually when you take an exact uh, step or a step that is very, uh, very sharp, uh, you have a linear, uh, a linear tail after the, uh, uh, the, the weakly nonlinear part of the, of the dispersive shock wave. And it will be nice, you, you can see it here actually, you see that the amplitude is not going really to zero after the, the S minus here, it's continuing and it's decaying uh, slowly. And actually, this uh, linear tail um, have a different work. Like you, you can use uh, linear wave theory to describe this linear tail uh, using really the, the usual two stash or an array phase uh, method, for instance. And it would be nice to find some kind of, of uh, like uh, Michael Berry talked about yesterday, uh, some uniform approximation between the linear tail and the weakly nonlinear uh, regime of the dispersive shock wave. And of course, what we are uh, really missing here is this part of the dispersive shock wave. So to have the same kind of universal description, but now in the small, small k regime. And uh, just t t 10, months, 10 more seconds. So it's totally different topic, but I just wanted to advertise that we have a PhD opportunity uh, at uh, Northumbria. Uh, so it will be on this topic of, of solid tone gas. So people, uh, some, some speaker will talk about solid tone gas later in this workshop. So this is uh, this collection of solid tone with a randomized position and parameter. And uh, the idea will be to, uh, to look at this solid tone gas, but um, in uh, quantum field in, in Bose-Einstein condensate. So to, to see what's happening, uh, especially when you add an external potential, so some walls, or, or if you consider multi-component uh, uh, NLS equation. And uh, yeah, so here is a link uh, to uh, for, for uh, find a PhD. Uh, it's supervised by me and, and, and Gennady. And uh, if you have good candidates or if you want to, uh, if you want to discuss uh, this project to have more, more information, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to give you more information. And uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, great talk. Um, at some point you throw away this quantum pressure every yeah. time. Um, is this honest or is this just? So it's, it's, <laughs> it's honest in the sense that uh, when you do with a modulation equation, I mean, it's a quasi-linear equation. You don't have dispersive uh, right. correction. So what we are doing here, basically, we want to recover. Uh, so taking the dispersion less limit is really to recover the with a modulation system. But in principle, they are here. I mean, it's, you, it's kind of the dispersive, uh, it's a dispersive correction to the quasi-linear system, but in the weakly nonlinear regime. Yes, so because th that system still captures the dispersion of NLS, right? Yeah, There's yeah, gamma yeah. In it. So it's valid. That's something right. that is not in Wisdom. Actually, it's a small benefit that we don't have in Wisdom modulation is that here we have this dispersive correction for the weakly nonlinear regime. Yeah, so it, it's because of the solution, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's because yes. we're interested yeah. by okay. rarefaction wave. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. for this particular solution, okay. You have a, we're running out of time, but we may have... Okay, okay, thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Well, let's think. Zoom call.